This is the document about how to train grip strength and finger structural stability. My name is Björn Alber. I'm an MD and an, in sports medicine and a PhD in sports physiology. To give you some credibility to why I'm doing this, I'm giving you a little bit of a background first. I've been training myself with the Swedish Olympic kayak team in the 80s and then did a MSc in sports physiology, gone to be a scientist with the Swedish National Board of Occupational Safety and Health, on to becoming an MD specialized in general and sports medicine and as a teacher with the Swedish Society of Sports Medicine. As of 1990, national team physician certified by Swedish Society of Sports Medicine. Since the 80s, um, continuously lecturing and consulting with major gym change in Sweden and leading several large Swedish companies in health program implementation. Since the 1990s, I've been running a private sports medical clinic specializing in the sports I'm mostly interested in, which would be um, training and uh, weight training, specifically kayaking and sports sports climbing. Since 2005 I've been a research director of X-Force, a Swedish revolutionary training machine and principal. And uh, since half a year back and now on uh, the, co the coach uh, and since every year is back the team physician of the National Swedish Climbing Team uh, on the junior side. In climbing, the technical and mental game, the endurance, balance and flexibility is utterly important. Without grip strength, you are lost. No matter what sport, strong muscles, tendons, joints will make you a winner and keep you free of injuries. But remember, performance is standing on three legs. It's training, it's food and it's resting. And you fail to combine these three. Uh, you will utterly fail, you will underperform and become injured or even sick. So, the most important muscles for grip strength would be the finger flexors, the muscles that are flexing your fingers, located on the inside of your forearm up to your elbow. The finger extensor, just as important in stabilizing the grip and especially important for pinch grips, located on your forearm on the outside up to your elbow. The thumb adductors, which are specific muscles for Adducting the thumb, supinating the thumb um, in a grip. Um, the supinators of the palm, palms up, and the pronators of the palms, palms down. And these muscles need to be trained in a specific way to give you all the kinds of strength and power you need. You need to train maximal static gripping power, that is to hold, latch a grip. Maximal dynamic gripping power, that is to be able to latch it momentarily get high power very fast, endurance to keep the grip and lactic acid tolerance to go on having a good grip and using high tension to grip even though you're burning lactic acid without feed of oxygen to the muscle you will do, be doing anaerobic work which will produce lactic acid and that will loosen your grip and make you fail utterly in, in the very end. Uh, to increase strength uh, in the true sense, you need to improve on the muscle. You can do that through muscle growth, through hypertrophia, that is the fibers of your muscle cells in your in that affected muscle will grow bigger and, and more of them. Uh, but at least through your teenage period, you will also be able to do hyperplasia, that is more fibers. Um, will develop in in more cells, that is the cells themselves will divide. Uh, but you can also grow stronger by neuro, neuromuscular adaption, that is you teach the muscle to fire fuller and faster. That is not a true strength gain and specifically it will not uh, improve on your uh, stability uh, and your uh, capacity to withstand strain, uh, you will just make the muscle perform better, more power, faster. 
You can increase the endurance of the muscle by capillary growth and cellular adaption, which basically will happen when you use the muscles in the way it should be used, continuous climbing, etc. But you must, according from this, uh, separate building of muscular strength from recruitment training. Muscular strength, durability, and hypertrophia, maybe even hyperplasia, will happen through growth of muscular fi fibers. So hyperplasia or hypertrophia, both will give a truly stronger muscle. The duration of the load should be 12 to 15 seconds, uh, 8 to 12 repetitions, exactly the same movement, which would make it hard in climbing. You should be using more than 8% than on one repetition max, that is 80% of your maximal power. Uh, this will increase stability and durability as well as increased endurance. Recru recruitment on the other hand, on their hand is, is not really improving true strength, it's uh, getting more out of the muscle, making the nerves activate the muscles faster and fuller. You can make take more out of the muscle, there's no real strength gain. Um, the bouts would be something like two to four seconds long at maximal load. And it need to be really maximal load. This will not increase stability or durability or endurance. So, examples of exercises to do this. Strength, durability, hypertrophy, Russian finger rolls, hit strip training according to Eric Hurst and uh, produced by Nikros. High rep, more than 10 campus on large strips. Long, more than 45 seconds, uh, hangs on the Lopez uh, rungs. Uh, one hand rolling grip. Uh, grippers, forearm supination and pronation training, reverse forearm roll, slagboard, steep bouldering, uh, with more than one minute in, in uh, duration. Recruitment, on the other hand, is maximal load for a short time. Thunder roller, campus, uh, fingerboards, system ball climbing, double dinos on the campus board. Lopus, shorter, uh, more maximal hang on smaller rungs, even loaded. And uh, finally, you can even try jumping to the lopus rungs. But remember, the muscle is divided into different fiber types and you need to understand that to be really strong, to really have good gripping power, you need to activate the fast and strong ones, the fast switch fibers. Not only the slow twitch. Remember that the fast twitch muscle fiber can generate the greatest force and will do that faster than the slow twitch. And also remember that if the tension, the load, and the exercise is not high enough, the fast switch fiber will not develop. I still graph will illustrate using uh, an intensity of up to 50%, really only the slow twitch fibers, the endurance fibers are working, while increasing the intensity up to 70, 80 or more, the fast switch type uh, uh, endurance uh, fatigue resistance will also be engaged. But the really powerful high uh, force generators, the fast switch type A, will not go into action until you go above 80 and up to 100% of the possible intensity. So look at the top of this graph. The slow twitch will engage slowly but continue to give force, but a very low force for a longer period of time. The fast fatigue resistance fiber type will engage a little bit faster and create a higher force uh, but a little bit slower over time. The fast fatigable, the really powerful and fast one, will generate force a lot more and a lot faster but will keep it for quite a, sh a shorter period of time. So if the tension in your workout isn't high enough, the fast which fiber will not develop and you will not really become stronger. And this especially refers to catching a grip, holding a grip. So to be maximally strong and fast, you need to work out slow with high intensity because that's the only safe way to activate the fast twitch fiber. If you try to go really fast, you cannot activate the intensity enough and you will be a much higher risk of injuring yourself. 
this is a short movie uh, presenta presenting a machine called the X-Force machine, a Swedish invention, world uh, patents uh, on, that will specifically train the strong parts of the muscle, that is in this specific exercise using the chest and the triceps muscles, they will load hard, about 80% of max, pushing out. But in the slow going back of the exercise, if you look at the um, uh, weight stack, it's swinging back and putting on more, actually more than 40% more of the weight putting out going uh, on the concentric phase. It overloads the muscles faster in a safe way and makes the muscle respond and grow stronger, faster and safer. So understand that time under tension is also important. If you do something really quick, the time under tension will be too slow to make the muscle respond. That's why you should not only try to do fast movements because they will really give very little strength gain except for the neuromuscular adaption, the recruiting. If you use the tempo in the exercises as far as you can of about three seconds going on the concentric, about one second on the static and about five seconds on the lowering phase, this would be optimally uh, efficient. Uh, it's kind of hard on, on several of the exercises I will later suggest, but keep that in mind. Control time under tension. But before we start all this, remember to warm up. Everybody says this, nobody really does it in an adequate way. This is to increase strength, flexibility, endurance and power. So you first of all need to warm up properly. It will reduce your risk, the risk of injury. It will increase your muscular output. It will increase your aerobic output. That is the, the, the possibility for the muscle to work hard with oxygen delivered. But also the anaerobic output that is for the muscle to continue working without any oxygen being delivered and with a lot of lactic acid building up. It will also increase the speed and, recru uh, and recruitment in nervous transmission. That is, without warming up, you're not really training hard. You will have about 15% higher aerobic and anaerobic capacity and uh, the speed of uh, uh, nerve transmission will also increase as will the power uh, output of the muscle itself. So you need to engage a large portion of the muscle mass at a relatively high intensity for no less than 10-15 minutes. You can do this by rowing, running, biking, uh, or continuously easy up and down climbing to get really warm, to get your heart pumping, uh, to get your start to sweat. The muscle will have to be at about 38, 38.5 degrees centigrade to be optimally functioning. Before you then start your training, you will stretch the muscles you're, uh, you're aiming to um, work out, and you will do that only briefly. So, let's look at exercise pole. First, continuing the warm-up for the specific muscles we're now going to work out. We, of course, are using the chin exercise. Slow and controlled. This is really, really a bit of a fast tempo, but it's still very controlled, as you can see, no real twitching. And as soon as that is finished, you can go on to weighted chins or one arms. To warm up uh, shoulders and the front of the chest, you also do some chins. Then you go on with an exercise intended to keep you from injuring your elbows uh, and that is a reverse curl with weights because you're usually using your biceps as powerful flexors of the elbow but that will also want to twist your hands so to balance that out you can warm up by doing this exercise heavy slow and controlled it will prevent injury you will be happy you did it when you've done it because you'll keep safe then to start the finger training proper by going into Russian finger rolls. Preferably you make this safe by using a Smith machine uh, or something to keep you from dropping the bar on the floor because you're going to do this all the way up to fatigue and failure. 
the weight, well, it should be at least body weight and you, you will aim, be aiming at trying to do this 6 to 10 repetition with almost double body weight if you get really strong, depending on your total body weight, uh, of course. One thing I must insist on is you saving your shoulders. Today's climbing, bouldering and lead climbing is more and more shoulder intense. Small muscles uh, in the sh inside the shoulders stabilize the upper arm on the sh shoulder blade. Uh, there is no ball and socket as it is in the hip. It's just a ball and no socket. It's just a small cartilage plate. Training the out rotators uh, of the shoulders will save your shoulders a lot of trouble. And look at all the top athlete climbers who have shoulder injuries. This is all due to neglecting this. So do it. The thing I'm suggesting here is something called the shoulder horn in which you actually support your arms in a in like a support device which makes the shoulders almost go out at a 90 degrees angle and you can only use the small supraspinatus muscle to outward rotate makes your, your shoulders a lot more stable after that it's time for the real heavy stuff uh, if you can you do the one arm chins if you can't you can do assisted chins or weighted chins but the aim should be to be able to suspend your body weight with one arm. Um, once you can do that, it's no purpose in getting stronger. One more bout with the shoulders, and that is muscle ups. And if you do them on a bar, that's fine, but that's also makes it possible to use technique to get up. Using the Olympic rings, you will have to really work with all the muscles around the shoulder girdle. Uh, makes it more stable, makes you really stronger. And of course, this is one of the most important exercises to do if you want to be good at mantling. Then on to the hand training proper, and as I mentioned in the start, hit strips developed by Eric Hurst and produced by Nikros is a very good way of training the fingers in a systematic way uh, with low risk. So this is something I can recommend even for the youth, because the strips and the pinches are designed, uh, are designed to support, uh, not to really hurt the structures in the fingers, the tendons, the pulleys. Um, and by repeating each movement for each finger combination um, between 6 and 12 times you get uh, definitely get um, muscular uh, strength increasement and stability increasement cartilage uh, performance in your fingers in your forearms uh, on this little clip it's actually not real hip strip training because the subject is going up and down just once and then changing uh, what you would be doing is going up and down at least twice and uh, as you can do it without um, feet you can start doing it with extra weight but as you see from the clip uh, the subject cha is changing from different positions of fingers different two finger combinations and down to open hand crimps um, over pinches. Then we go one step further in stressing the forearms. We use grippers. Uh, the types I prefer is what is called the Captain Crush grippers because they are structurally made so you can really assess what kind of load you're putting on the fingers you can increase it systematically by increasing the, the number on the gripper aim for at least 6 to 12 uh, cramps on each side before you increase uh, the resistance of the gripper the grip should be pushed into parallel but you don't have to touch the handles
then it's time to strengthen the, the muscles that supinates and pronate your forearm. This is a good way of ensuring a very strong grip uh, and avoid a lot of pains from the elbow, which is a common occurrence in climbers. This is a simple device. You have piece of a broom handle which you grade so you can see your progress you twist it back and forth uh, moving your hand out more and more as you grow stronger aiming as usual for between 6, 8 up to 10, 12 repetitions per side keeping the control Then one more exercise for the extensor muscles, all the time getting a stronger pinch grip and avoiding problems because these muscles are most of the time undeveloped, uh, even in good climbers. A sliding uh, roller uh, with a thin line and a heavy weight and you're extending the forearm continuously. Then we go on to uh, the flexors, uh, start with a small rolling handle with a, as heavy weight as possible and try to close the grip and uh, open it up very slowly to use the negative phase uh, maximally efficiently. Remember this will be progressive, if you can do it you increase the weight. Try to keep, keep the eccentric face as slow as possible because this will improve the effectiveness, effectiveness of the exercise. Then we go on to the pinch grip. Uh, we are using a plastic block which is very very slippery uh, forcing uh, very very high tension on the pinch grip but still try to use as much weight as you can lift and hold for just a couple of seconds so this is more of a recruitment exercise why the rolling grip is more of a um, hypertrophia exercise then a recruitment exercise for the flexors and that is the rolling thunder wide grip this is used by old strongman as a measurement of real grip strength. Uh, it's a recruitment exercise. It's, uh, you're keeping the weight up for a couple of seconds just. Maximum weight of course. And try to make progress. The grip is rolling. You cannot pinch it. You're just lifting it with flexed fingers and changing grips and do it again. again. Then on to the campus board, and this is for the advanced or elite climber. The injury risk is real. Um, you use a small, the smallest drawing you can possibly handle for the different types of exercises you can do. And there are several different uh, ways you can do this. You can just walk the ladder. You can jump up and down in, in uh, dynamic campus movements, uh, which of course increases the risk of injury, but also increases the effect of the exercise. You can just go hand over hand, equal or unequally switching hands. Although uneven campus jumps, dinos or double dinos. At the end of the exercise time, because this is a high risk exercise. Then on to the Lopez board, which I think is very useful and can be used even for pretty young people as long as you don't put any dynamics or weights into it and keep the rungs bigger and, and safer. But for the accomplished climber, for the elite climber, as high weight as possible on as low size rung as possible, um, using 10 to 15 seconds in the hang. And also to increase endurance, uh, the slag board, uh, max hang, preferably on the small crimp place, but you can use any combination uh, depending on 
what other types of training you are aiming to put into the program. Of course, putting a telef uh, mobile phone up and looking at the time is useful if you don't have a partner that times you. Uh, but aim to really fatigue yourself, you're at the end of your, of your program here. Something uh, underestimated is the importance of using the fingers individually. So I've been happy to find the Crusher fingerboard from Great Britain, uh, which it makes it possible to train individual fingers. You, of course, try all the different uh, settings, that is from four finger to three finger to two finger combination, all of them uh, down to one finger, which most of us will have to have uh, support in some way to be able to do. But you will find that this you will get stronger in the individual finger grip holding fast if you try this and if you don't try it you will never get the real strength for one fingers a couple of second long hangs five maximally ten uh, rest for a while and then do it again in another combination Front lever is something I always throw into these exercises because you're still using the grip but you're also using your whole core strength and uh, you can do it, you can climb pretty hard. Using the Olympic rings, the Roman rings will make it even harder because you need to stabilize the shoulders as I told you earlier. And as a finishing touch you can do the jumping Lopez which I think is pretty scary. But if you're strong enough, been working out long enough, uh, and are old enough, that is uh, far out of the uh, teenage uh, younger range where there's a big risk of injury, then you can do this exercise. In which you will jump the rungs going down in size and then up in size again. And of course this will uh, really work out your maximal uh, catch grip strength. My ability to catch and hold a very small grip. So then on to program suggestions and I will separate three basic groups, the youth climber, the accomplished climber and the elite climber. The programs will be more advanced, of course, and longer for the more advanced groups. And the main focus of the youth climber is to increase real strength, not to use any type of recruitment training. This, that is important to avoid in the younger age groups. So the youth will do a thorough warm-up, and that will almost always have to be under guidance of a trainer, because this is where you tend to take corn, cut corners. So, jogging around, doing gymnastics exercises, full body exercises uh, to get the blood pumping and the sweat going. On to easy vertical boulders, keeping it up, keep getting the temperature even higher. And then on to the grippers, uh, progressive, harder and harder, but keep it controlled, keep it slow and 10 to 12 reps, not lower. On to chins and um, they should also be slow and, if it works out, weighted. Uh, then on to the Russian finger curls. Same thing, slow and deliberate, controlling the negative. On to a full bar to hit strips, that is two sets of pinches, two finger pairs, all three different uh, combinations, followed by open crimps, full hand, and one more set, the same. Then on, on to slagboard or Lopez hang for max time, no extra weight uh, and no dynamics, followed by stretching, especially for the fingers. The accomplished climbers can do about the same warm up with on the rower or treadmill or cross trainer, six minutes or more. Easy vertical boulder 
couple of more minutes and then maybe even rope climbing with or without feet. Onto the grippers, a little bit lower repetitions, six to ten, shoulder rotations, reverse curls, shins slow and weighted and onto the one arm, maybe assisted, maybe unassisted and for the really strong ones uh, even extra weight on the one arms. There's no point in going above 10 repetitions, you should always add weight then. Russian finger curls, aim for double body weight, slow, deliberate curls. Pronation, supination training, extensor roller, one hand rolling grip at uh, 6 to 10 repetitions per hand, one set. And onto the rolling turn, turn the wide grip. Uh, max lift, two seconds, two sets. Go on to the muscle ups, two sets of them, maximal repetition number. If it's in the Roman rings, uh, you will never have to add extra weight, there will be enough strain anyway. Onto the hit strips, these will be weighted and just one set on each combination pinch, two finger pairs, open crimp, full hand. On to the campus board, board with you for first will just be walking up and down, on, uh, going down on rung size to the smallest rung, uh, switching to the Lopez, uh, 10 seconds max hangs, weighted if you can control it on the smallest rungs, um, and then onto the max hang on the slag board without weight. This is for endurance. Do the front lever and do the stretch. For the lead climb, it will be even more cumbersome. The warm up, the easy vertical boulder, just to get your fingers doing the right thing. The rope climb without feet. The grippers, as heavy as possible, but keep the repetitions and the control up. Shoulder rotations, reverse curls. Shins, weighted, one arms, weighted maybe. Russian finger curls, aim for double body weight. Pronation, supination, rev it up, do it as slow and with as much distance from the weight to your arm as possible. Extensor rollers, heavy weights controlled. One hand rolling grip, 6 10 repetitions, maximal weight, uh, two sets for each hand, and then the roller, running thunder wide grip, two second lifts, two sets per hand. Onto the pinch grip, two sets per hand at the max, small weight, but keep the two seconds. Then two sets of muscle ups. Onto the campus board, we will do a full, full program, up and down, small and strong, uneven up and down, switching, dinos, double dinos. Onto the lupus max hang, time, not extra weight. The crusher finger board, all finger combinations, uh, at least five seconds. A combination assisted if you need it to be weighted if you can slag board max hang for time front lever a stretch and if you're up to it put in the jumping to lopez a final word on this why don't we want to push our youngsters into dynamic moves or overhanging or even to specialize in boulder when they're below 16 to 17 years of age. A very real danger is the reason. reason the danger of epiphyseal damage to the fingers. Picture here is a Swedish elite youth uh, who did a little bit too much of dynamic moves on crimpers uh, and in where you see the arrow in the picture there is a damage to the epiphyseal plate that is the plate in the finger which the finger grows from and if this wouldn't have healed he would have had a shorter and a weaker finger the rest of his life it took more than six months of complete off climbing and then uh, more, some more months of slow rehabilitation before he was back into business so from 12 to 17 years of age if you don't have an x-ray that confirms that the epiphyseal plates are closed then you should avoid campusing, going on crimpers dynamically, steep terrain. So for the youth, the training should emphasize on, on strength gain and structural gains and aerobic endurance, not on recruitment. Not if you want to create a climber for life.
which is what we all do.